Hi there, everyone. My name is Prayag Jithani. I'm an MDMBA student here at Yale. And today we will be talking about a very interesting topic, which is a way to combat stress. So it says ways here, but we're going to focus on one way today. And the reason I want to focus on just one way is because this is actually backed by recent research. And more importantly, it actually sits at the intersection of medicine, which is one of my hobbies, and then business, which is one of my other hobbies, because I, I as you know, I'm an MDMBA student. Um, this is based on this paper here, which is the Association of Team Learning uh, Behavior and Reduced Burnout Among Medical Residents. Uh, this is the source, and if obviously you want to explore this paper, I strongly encourage you to do it on your own. But I am here to help uh, kind of facilitate the process for you because the details of this is, let's just first of all define stress, and then I will talk a bit about how this um, paper addressed that. So stress is something that we've all faced in our day-to-day -day lives, and there's generally two, two approaches to overcoming it. The first one is to just kind of buckle down and deal with it. So this is kind of uh, this aspect of quit quit whining, just, just get your shit together and figure it out. Uh, the second one is to disconnect, and some people deal with stress in this way because they often take a break. Sometimes they'll go and get a long vacation. Sometimes they take a mini break during the day. Sometimes they take a nap, whatever it is. So those are the two ways that we're often taught to deal with stress. However, there's pitfalls, right? Buckling down, if you've watched any of my other videos, you'll know that buckling down personally actually doesn't lead to good uh, outcomes. And the reason for this is because when you buckle down, you don't actually address the, the issue that you're dealing with. And instead, you just are trying to keep going and that leads to decreasing marginal returns for increasing time. And you may have the perfect example of this, which is like oftentimes when you can't think of a solution for a problem, the longer you sit there, the more elusive the solution to that problem becomes. And even if you eventually reach it, it takes you way longer than if you had just taken a break and come back to it in the beginning uh, to begin with, right? So that's the pitfall of buckling down. The pitfall of disconnecting, on the other hand, is the fact that even if you disconnect, I do agree that chances are you can come back and do better. But if you have to disconnect to get away from whatever is causing you the stress, I don't think you've addressed whatever it is that's causing you stress in the first place, right? So all of this to say, what is a way to overcome this? Well, the details of this study is the fact that learning learning new things and also reframing things in the format of saying like, hey, this thing is really challenging, but it's an opportunity to learn something new can actually decrease stress. And I say this one, because anecdotally, it is 100% true for me to this day, the moment I read something new, I watch a YouTube video about a topic I don't actually know much about, or I try to learn something interesting, like whether that's through masterclass, Coursera, or even something like in business school, where I learned how to invest, my mind is just so much better. It's so much happier because it's actually in this like state of just feeling so free and just saying like, hey, I know nothing about this topic and I want to learn something about it. And that's a very liberating feeling to go into something and say, hey, there's no expectations here. Just figure something new out. This is the beautiful part of the world where you live in a world that needs to be decoded, right? So in this study, they actually took 80 internal medicine residents at Johns Hopkins, which is one of the best hospitals in the country. And their analysis revealed that residents who thought that their team engaged in more learning behaviors, such as seeking out new information or reflecting on the team's work process and saying like, hey, maybe this can be improved, maybe this can be improved, reported significantly lower levels of burnout, right? Uh, you may already know burnout, but burnout is basically excessive exhaustion, secondary to feeling like whatever, you do, whatever you're doing is not actually having an impact on anything. The results of this cross-sectional study um, uh, show that res residents' perceptions of greater learning behavior in their team were associated with significantly lower self-reported burnout. The caveat here is that you're often associating burnout with stress, and obviously that is this assumption. And I do agree that sometimes it's not logical to make that assumption that stress equals burnout. But I think it has been pretty well established at this point that stress is a big contributor. Obviously, it's not sufficient to cause burnout, but it's a big contributor and likely very necessary for burnout. So if you make that connection now, if you can now reframe your problems in the context of saying, hey, this is a really challenging thing, like residency is really challenging, but hey, I'm going to learn something new out of this, or hey, this is a really crappy situation, but maybe after this, I'm going to be a little bit better at managing X, Y, and Z. Well, I think then you are better for it. So now let's actually see how we can implement this into our day-to-day -day lives to take on less stress. The first thing I already mentioned Try to reframe stressful situations as opportunities to learn and grow. Just that single reframing can make all the difference. 
And um, I personally have experienced this a lot because sometimes in a really crappy situation. Let me just give you an example. Let's say you go through a breakup. That's a really crappy situation that may lead to a lot of stress because, you know, obviously you care a lot about that person and now you're not with them anymore. And while that can be really crappy, I can tell you that one of the things that has helped me through breakups is just seeing like, hey, this is a really crappy situation, but I think I'm going to come out a stronger person from this. And I think I'm going to learn about what didn't make this work. And hopefully I'd make sure I don't repeat the same thing in the future. And because of that, I'm going to be a better person. That makes it that much easier to deal with that big, big ass stressor. And I can tell you that was like one of the best ways that really helped me personally uh, in previous relationships that ended, right? Um, so that's just one way to reframe. The second way is to understand the causes of your stress and understand that those same causes are going to likely also be causes of stress for other people and then sh use that shared commonality to talk about ways to address it. Just like how when people go through breakups and they, they're able to openly talk about it with other people who have been through breakups, that helps you, right? Just like how if you're in residency and you're working your ass off, it likely helps you to know that other residents are also working their ass off. And that's why residency is such a cohesive unit. People are understanding that we're all going through this together. And when you talk about things and you have this shared experience, it makes things that much easier to overcome. And so not just reframing, I think learning in general, learning something else and just taking your mind away from whatever is causing you stress can also be very good. So if you have Google Chrome, they actually unveiled this new feature now, which is called a reading list. So every week now, whenever I run into a story that I think is super interesting, I add it to my reading list. And actually, oftentimes if I'm super stressed, I actually spend a good part of my day sometimes saying like, okay, I can't deal with this right now. What I'm going to do is just like read an interesting New York Times story that I have bookmarked. And when I read it, it actually gets my mind off things and I'm able to be very free again. And that then like shows me like, oh my God, I really do love learning. And even though this is a big challenge and kind of crappy, I think it's, I'm going to be better for it. So with all of that being said, this is a very short video, but I hope you found this insightful. If you did, please drop a like, comment, share, subscribe. Really appreciate it. it means a lot to me. Uh, so thank you all for watching. I'll see you on the next video. Take care of yourself. And if you can, someone else too. Okay, peace.